Now, if we're thinking about autosomal dominant inheritance, we could think about a dominant gene that carries a disease state, such as polycystic kidney disease. Polycystic, where the kidney grows many pathological cysts. Now, the polycystic kidney disease gene is dominant. And the normal gene for normal kidneys is recessive. So the polycystic kidney disease gene gives us a, over time, gives us a kidney with many pathological cysts in it, leading to hypertension and eventually renal failure. So how is this inherited? Because it's entirely genetic. Well, we know a dominant gene is one which will be expressed if present. So let's imagine we have one parent who is big P, small p. This means they have a gene for polycystic kidney disease and they have a normal gene as well. Therefore, this person is phenotypically a sufferer and genotypically they are heterozygous. And they reproduce with someone who does not have polycystic kidney disease, therefore has two versions of the normal gene. Because remember, the dominant gene will be expressed if present. A recessive gene will only be expressed in the absence of a dominant gene. And in this case, the disease condition is dominant. So to be phenotypically normal, we need two copies of the recessive normal gene. Formation of gametes, as we would expect. Large P, small p, small p, small p. So there's a 50% chance that any of the gametes in the affected person will be carrying the disease state. So let's think about the possible recombinations here. That one and that one, or that one and that one are possible. Alternatively, it could have been that one with that one, or that one with that one. They're the possibilities. Now, what would that give us? Well, that gives us a large P and a small P. This person is genotypically heterozygous and because they carry one copy of the dominant disease gene, phenotypically they will be a sufferer. And it's the same here, large P, small P. So again, genotypically heterozygous, phenotypically suffering from polycystic kidney disease. But here we have a small P and a small P, giving us two small P's. And it's the same there, two small p's. So what this means is 50% of the potential children will be sufferers from polycystic kidney disease. 50% will be normal. So if we are advising parents or potential parents with polycystic kidney disease, one partner has polycystic kidney disease, the other partner doesn't. Assuming that the affected partner is genotypically heterozygous, we can advise these people that there's a 50% chance of any child being born to that marriage having polycystic kidney disease. But there is a 50% chance that they will not. And it's the same with all autosomal dominant conditions. There's a 50% chance that any of the children will be affected by the disease process. So it would be just the same if it was Huntington's career, for example, which is also autosomal dominant. A 50-50 chance. So autosomal dominant, 50% chance of any one child being affected.